We finished up our last video by showing you all five torques in action with this image. Now I want to compare these same five torques with an image where the arm and leg positions are reversed. And in the process, I am going to point out five distinct observations regarding them. Let's start by removing some of the text from our image here. And now we are left with just the five directions of the torques on the body. And now I want to take it a step further and focus on the torques coming from the legs only. And in particular, I want to start with a torque generated from the right leg. Now let's go ahead and slide this image over to the left and let's put up an image next to it where the arm and leg positions are reversed for comparison. So in the image on the left, we have the right hip in extension, the right knee in extension, and the right ankle in plantar flexion. And this is the classic triple extension position you may have heard about, and this is all producing a counterclockwise torque around the spinal column. And now in the image on the right, this same right leg or hip is now in flexion. And if we imagine that the force that it produces acts alone, the question we want to ask ourselves again is, which direction will it cause the body to turn around the spinal column? Well, just like we have done up until this point, we know that the force coming from the right leg is displaced to the right of the spine. So it has to rotate the body in one direction or the other. And if we imagine this force continuing in the same direction, which is forward, we can see that it too will spin the body in a counterclockwise direction around the spinal column. Or in other words, the force coming from the right leg will also produce a counterclockwise torque. So the first thing to take from all of this is that it doesn't matter if your right hip is being pushed from behind as seen in the image on the left or pulled forward from the front as seen by the image on the right. Your right leg will always produce a counterclockwise torque around the spinal column. And interestingly enough, a similar situation holds true with the left leg. If you recall from video number two of this series, the left hip was in flexion, as seen again here in the image on the left, and we found that it produced a clockwise torque around the spinal column. And now in the image on the right, where the entire left leg is in triple extension and pushing from behind, it also produces a clockwise torque around the spinal column. So that is the second observation to take from all this. And that is, your left leg will always produce a clockwise torque around the spinal column. The image on the left should start to look familiar to you by now because this was how we ended our discussion on the five torques in the last video, as well as how we started out in this one. And we learned from this image that the torques produced by both arms and the spine, numbered three, four, and five, were in the same direction, or counterclockwise, as was the leg in triple extension, which is the right leg labeled number one. And all of these torques are colored in yellow for a quick review so that you can easily see them turning in the same direction. The only torque opposing all of these spinning in the opposite direction is torque number two for the hip flexors, which is colored in red. But now in the image on the right, where the arm and leg positions are reversed, while the directions of the torques coming from the legs remains the same, the torques coming from both arms and the spine switch their directions to clockwise to line up and favor or support once again the leg in triple extension, which is now the left leg. So while the directions of the torques produced by the legs through the hips never change, those produced by the left arm, right arm, and spine do by switching their directions to favor the leg in triple extension. So this now becomes our third observation regarding these five torques. And that is, the torques produced by the left arm, right arm, and spine always switch their direction to favor the leg in triple extension. 
Now I want you to take a look at our athlete running in slow motion and apply what we have learned so far with these first three observations so that you can start to see and appreciate a little more carefully just how amazing the human body has been designed for optimum performance. What we want to do first is identify the leg in triple extension and determine whether it's the right leg or left. So here we see that the left leg is in triple extension. And we know from observation number two that we talked about earlier, the left leg will always produce a clockwise torque around the spinal column as seen by our red arrow. And now here comes the reinforcing help from the arms and torso, also in red and also in the same clockwise direction that we learned about from our third observation in that they always favor the direction of the leg in triple extension. And finally, we see the hip flexors on the right opposing these four torques with a yellow arrow in the opposite or counterclockwise direction to help maintain balance. And of course, this all occurs at the same time, but I wanted to piece it together for you here so that you can see how everything comes together perfectly. Now let's look at this when the arms and legs switch positions. Again, first identify the leg in triple extension, which is now the right leg. And we already know from observation number one that we talked about earlier, that it will produce a counterclockwise torque around the spinal column as seen by our yellow arrow. And now here comes the reinforcing help from the arms and torso, also in yellow, and also in the same counterclockwise direction as the leg in triple extension. And finally, we see the hip flexors now on the left side, opposing these four torques with a red arrow in the opposite or clockwise direction to once again help maintain perfect balance. I would be willing to bet that many of you watching this would never have guessed that the leg in triple extension, where the powerful glutes and hams, quads and calves are working their hardest, would still need extra support from the rest of the body to help offset the torque created by the front side hip flexors in the opposite leg. Yet that is exactly what needs to happen in order for you to be able to walk and run in a straight line. And because of this, your hip flexor muscles are essentially the pace setter when it comes to how fast you'll be able to run. In other words, you can put in a lot of good effort training up your backside glutes and hams as well as your quads and calves. But in order for you to fully appreciate the hard work you put in, you will also need to equally raise the level of strength in the front side hip flexors to counter this effort. Because if you don't, you will hit a plateau in your speed training and that plateau is more than likely dictated by the strength or lack thereof in your front side hip flexors simply because many of you are putting very little effort into them when compared to the backside glutes and hams. And this can be easily seen by this equation once again, where the two sides need to be in balance. Simply raising the strength on one side does not mean the other side will automatically get stronger. This is not an open-ended equation where you simply add strength to one part or parts of the body and speed follows. But rather, this is an equation of balance. And so anything you do on one side also needs to be countered on the other side in order for you to raise your sports performance. So that is our fourth observation. And that is your hip flexors are the pace setter when it comes to how fast you can run and are needed to offset the powerful muscles involved in triple extension, as well as the shoulders and spine. The fifth and final observation is more of a reminder to you than anything. And that is this, in order for you to achieve your true running speed potential, you will need a training routine that focuses on the muscles involved in triple extension, hip flexion, shoulder flexion, shoulder extension, and lateral spine rotation on both sides of your body. I hope you enjoyed this series of torque videos. Please subscribe to our channel, like our videos, and leave us a comment. Thank you.